introduce our guest speaker of today. She is Sister Marion Wing. Um, she's from Joburg and she's a lovely, lovely woman that I've gotten to know personally because she did a sensitive midwifery certified midwife course with us last year and she's absolutely passionate um, about moms babies and um, especially in the postnatal period and also empowering moms antenatally for birth and for what's um, about to come so some of you might really know her because she's got a very active practice up north um, she's a lovely lovely lady and she understands that every um, mom every baby diet is unique it's individual there's no um, same scenario situation but however there are a lot of things that we can um, troubleshoot or that we can that applies for all moms or preventative strategies so we are going to dive in with her today and also I encourage you if you're listening and there are questions that that you are realizing you still have not f feel answered you can post your questions in the comment sections below and my team will get them to me and we will answer them at the end of the session so you're welcome to do that before we get going with the show, just a special thank you to our sponsor. And today's sponsor is Natura. And we are all for natural remedies and Natura's pure nature, nature homeopathic remedies. So just have a listen here. Introducing Natura's mom and baby homeopathic range for mums and dads wanting a more natural way of life. When it comes to tummy troubles, Natura offers five beautiful remedies for both mom and baby. And for tummy grumbling, marg and melts are your natural answer for indigestion, for heartburn, and for nausea. The Natura Mom and Baby range is made only with organic ingredients. It's in a quick melt format for easy administering to babies. Developed closely with professional homeopaths, the range of 13 remedies is designed to deal with the most common mom and baby niggles. Natura for a more natural way of life available at Diskim and other leading pharmacies. That was Natura, thank you so much. And I'm gonna let um, Sister Marion wing in. Hi Marion, are you there? I'm here, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. You're looking beautiful and you're sounding Great. good. Yes, welcome to today's show. Thank I'm you so very happy much. That, that you've agreed to, um, to talking to all our moms and midwives out there. Um, you are an absolute expert in your field, and I believe you are going to be um, just the right person to, to tackle this topic, tummy troubles. But before we start talking, just tell us a little bit about yourself and, um, and what you do in a day-to-day. -day. Okay, so thank you for affording me this um, opportunity to actually talk about my passion, my mommies and my babies, and the daddies, they're also included. Um, Antenatal classes are what brings my mommies to me and we make sure that our mommies bond with us in the antenatal classes um, which are running through the year and during lockdown we actually didn't do much unfortunately but at the end of last year when everything slackened off a little bit with COVID things started moving. I'm sorry for my little kitty cat in the background. She's probably going to jump on me very soon. <laughs> Nothing mm -hmm. like distraction. No um, problem. So, <laughs> mm. yes, the clinic I run is um, an everyday baby, well baby immunizations clinic. And I must say, I have learned so much through the last 20 years of being in baby clinic via my mommies. My mommies and my babies teach me everything. I don't Google much. I do a lot of research and I learn a lot from my Gretia who is an absolute superstar mm -hmm. and I encourage all my moms to please go onto the site there and keep up with us it's wonderful and as she is promoting the Natura we love Natura we don't like medication we like our baby's gut microbes to be strong and we like to promote a healthy immune system which is your number one target for tummy troubles so and yeah. starts off right from day one and um I must yeah. say we use a lot of these natural products and in our antenatal classes we do run a breastfeeding class where we promote breastfeeding and I know a lot of my mommies sometimes struggle but we do promote and we do get lactation consultants in if we can't manage ourselves to help mm. these mommies to get them to breastfeed to 
um, make these little guts very strong. Mm. So on a daily basis, it's myself. I have one staff member and all day I am listening to mummies and tummy troubles are the main problem. This is why I said to Magriet, forget about everything else. Let's target these tummies. In the last few weeks, I must say that every single day I've had so many babies with issues and tummies and we've sort of sifted through them slowly but surely. I do offer myself after hours and when a baby is uptight and mommy has no help, then we're there for them. We try to guide them through this. As I say, they teach me a lot. And just mm -hmm. yesterday, actually, I had a newborn and I felt so sorry for this mom. Last night, she sent me a message to say, is this the immunization causing the screaming or is it colic? And just that high pitched scream told me this is definitely not vaccination related. This baby's got a proper colic and the history given to me was every day this kind of screaming. It was just a little bit more intense last night. So this is what we listen to and we try to prime our mommies before the babies are born to eat healthily, bolster their immune systems with natural products, try not to over medicate and try to apply this once the baby is born as well. There mm. are so many things we can talk about today and it can mm. take forever. Yeah. And the main things I think most mommies want to know about is colic and reflux and cow's milk protein allergy. Right. Um, um, yes. Um, yeah. So the, the main thing is that if you look at the newborn that is born at full gestation and has been born naturally with no medication given, these babies are normally strong. They normally don't have a lot of colic and they normally breastfeed well. And usually they don't have tummy troubles like the baby has gone through the cesarean section. Sometimes it's not your fault, you can't avoid it. And we have to try and build on that immune system some way or the other to prevent the gut issues. Mm -hmm. So um, we then try to get our mommies to breastfeed and to pass through the good uh, microbes, normally with a vaginal birth, they have what we call a vaginal wash during the birth. And that's the microbes coming through, which sets the microbiome and protects mm -hmm. that baby's gut. Right. I don't know what your feelings are on that, Mahriet. Yeah, no, absolutely true. Sure, Mary already said so many important things. So I'm just going to unpack it a little bit. Um, uh, first of all, um, uh, yeah, the main the main issues that you're facing every day, you're saying, is tummy troubles. So I think it's important for every every mommy to be that has never had babies to realize that that's, that is going to be your reality. And then the other real good thing that you said is that we try to um, make sure that the gut is in its healthiest form in order that to prevent. So I yes. think we are always on the preventative um, side of things. We, especially as midwives, as health workers, that's where we are. We are the first go-to and we really are passionate about preventing unnecessary troubles. Um, so it starts really also with just allowing um, nature to do its thing. That would be, that's why we are such promoters of of natural birth, of natural um, postnatal phase of breastfeeding, not just because it's it's mm -hmm. just a cool thing to do uh, for some women, it's a scary thing to do, but really it is the best for baby and it protects them from many issues after birth. So it sets them up for life. So yes, with the thing of the microbiome, that is number one key to keep our babies happy. And that comes through a natural birth, a vaginal birth, there's, there's the first introduction of the microorganisms mm. that will set the intestines, intestinal lining of the babies up, up for life. Um, so uh, absolutely, Marion, you're on it today with, with preventing. Mm. Um, then another remember, thing. Remember, everything yeah? is sorry, research no, based. It. Everything is evidence based. So mm. we are not saying these things because we feel this is how a mom should behave and how she should be feeding her baby. Mm. This is evidence based. So um, lots of research, moms, you're Googlers, you all know how to Google. And um, I had the very question last night from one of my mommies in the antenatal classes, who's due in the next few weeks, and asked me all about 
breastfeeding and does she really have to wake up every hour and a half to two hours to feed her baby? Can she not just top the baby up? Because this is what all her friends are telling her. The baby sleeps so well once it's been topped up with formula. So I went, no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And uh, sure. Uh, we just complicate our lives a lot more. So um, mm. just to explain to who that the beginning phases of, of having the newborn are so hard. Mm -hmm. uh, one doesn't sleep well. It's unheard of to sleep well when you've got a newborn baby. So the baby's tummy is only the size of a little puppet booth, five mils. That's all it can handle. Yet what do we want to do? We want to force 30, 40 mils into a newborn baby's gut already putting this baby at a compromise. So there we go. We're starting off with causing problems for the baby right at the outset. Yeah. Yeah, it's a big story, but I, I do agree that when um, with COVID now and moms being in a very stressed state um, with no help, um, lately I know that most of my mommies have had hubbies in the you see the cat oh she's naughty um we've had um the daddies in the unit with the moms however i've got one or two mommies that are going to government hospital and they are not allowed the daddies in so um we've got an immense amount of stress and they will follow on exactly what they're told in the hospitals and often the advice that is given is just to make life easier for the staff working in the unit at the time Mm -hmm. and prompting the formula to the baby. So my advice is strongly to try and get hold of somebody who can urge you and help you to try and get that baby latched right at the start and to give you the encouragement to carry on. Mm -hmm. And regardless of waking hours at night, we're doing the best we can for that baby in the beginning from a micro point of view mm -hmm. and a health status for that gut. So Marion, so I, if I hear you right, I think you are really uh, dealing with a lot of um, mummies that has already been exposed to all sorts of interventions yes. during uh, in the hospital and during the births and so forth. So you obviously come across a lot of troubles uh, that you need to help mummies with. Um, that we yeah. so we 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 know that we try to prevent them from happening, but life happens and the realities in South Africa are that we need to really still come a yes. long way in understanding the importance of all of that and we we can we're gonna spend so much time on breastfeeding in in the future but today really the questions were quite in and around real tummy troubles so you are having to do lots of damage repair in your clinic so let's just go yes. into into those so you've already mentioned that that the main tummy troubles that you are facing is, is colic and reflux um, yes. Just just explain for the audience what what is colic and what is reflux. Oh, colic is a nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> Having been the mom of a colic baby, my first baby, I know exactly what these mothers have gone through. And in my day, I know that's donkeys years ago. We did birth naturally most of the time, and I did breastfeed my child. But um, unfortunately this daughter of mine had a lot of allergies so and that was actually what was causing her colic so when we look at colic symptoms you're looking at a baby who cries for three hours and if I had that video of the baby last night you'll understand what kind of crying it is for three hours at a time for three days of the week for three weeks consistently there's generally a pattern to it and it generally happens at night You've changed the nappy, you've fed the baby, you've gone through the whole list of to-dos and what not to do. You've held the baby up right after its feeds, and you know that you have actually fed this baby for a good deal of time that is possibly not hungry. This is the little baby who gives it stick. It just screams. Doesn't matter what you do. Intense, fisting, angry red face, a very cross little baby. And then mommy starts feeling, what have I done? There's something wrong with me, or is my baby really sick? And then within the next few hours, this baby's fine. It's like stopped crying, it's feeding okay, and behaving normally. Normally these babies also have intense 
um, stools, explosive stools, and um, tummies as hard as a ball. And it's unexplainable. It's a lot of gas-related issues. And generally with these babies, we try and um, give them a little bit of chamomilla. We try and give them a little bit of um, homeopathic remedies. But the least given to this baby, the better. This baby needs the mommy, needs to listen to mommy's heart rate, needs to go upright on mom's chest, needs to be fed when it demands its feed. So the other thing we hear a lot of is extend the feed to three hours. You're overfeeding your baby. If you're breastfeeding your baby, your baby dictates to you. Generally, we know if the baby is overfeeding, you do get these greedy babies. That is the baby with the big swollen belly and big intensive farting and gassiness. And it is a horrible thing to go through with a colicky baby. Normally, these symptoms generally, you hear of it, they say the three month colic. So <laughs> the colic generally only goes away at three months. Some of my mommies will say to me, gee whiz, my baby's fine. There's no more. There's nothing going on. Then you look at the milestone, we've hit the three month mark. So it's all passed over now and babies settle down a bit. And that is the general that we see. Mm. Reflux, on the other hand, is a very different story. And I'm very afraid to say that reflux is actually not such a common thing as we think it is. So we overdiagnose every child that spits up gets a label of reflux, unfortunately. And every single baby that's born to this earth is immature. It's not like a little animal that's born to an animal, a baby animal, that can fend for itself, it can get up, it can walk, it can and can do a lot of things on its own. Newborn babies are immature when they're born. So the little valve, the gastroesophageal valve, is more often than not weak. And um, if we feed that baby and the baby has a nice good feeding session, often what happens is we have a bit of spit up. That little valve opens up a little bit and the spit up comes out. It is normal. This is normal. Most of these issues only resolve later on in a little infant life. So it can go on and on. However, the baby with proper reflux is the crying baby, the unhappy baby, the baby that just does not settle. No matter what we do, it loses weight, it vomits, it projectile vomits, and it's a distinct kind of vomiting. This is a very unhappy baby. And we see it in the clinic when we weigh them. They have um, either stayed static in their weight or they are not gaining weight well. This is the baby that we need to treat. We stay away from proton pump inhibitors, which is your Nexium. It is toxic for babies. Only if that baby has serious effects do we send them to the pediatrician and um, the pediatrician will act on that with various different ways. Um, have you got anything to say about that, Mohriet? Yeah, thank you. Let me just go in there. Thank you so much, Marion, for explaining the difference, um, the different colic and reflux scenarios. Um, very important to just uh, revisit them that um, colic is that crying baby but you really stated in the beginning that mm. that the colic is for if it's if it's over an extended period of time crying for more than three hours uh or for more than three weeks and so forth um so i think most of the time also colic is overdiagnosed. um yes. so just to for every mommy out there to just put them at ease that there will be times that your baby's gonna cry and you don't know what to do and it's just crying and that is actually just part mm. of being a baby and um, so to differentiate if it's really a colic issue um, that is where you can come to to us to really find out if there's a real problem but most of the time mommies are over worried and it's most of the time not colic and not yes. every not every cramp is colic um, and there's definitely a few things that we can do to help soothe baby um, uh, we can mm. talk about the, those also now just uh, for crying babies what are really good tips to soothe them and then with regards to reflux I, lo I love it that you're also pointing it out that it's most of the time overdiagnosed and are probably mm. also unnecessarily treated with with 
the scary drugs as you've already mentioned yes. um, and we uh, mommies need to be aware of that um, so bef- really really make sure that it is a, a proper reflux like if the baby is, is vomiting uh, regurgitating that is also quite normal as you say because babies are immature um, and that's, it's every baby will bring up milk so if a baby is, is thriving yes. it's growing and still vomiting then it's most of the time a normal e- event yes. so um, reflux is quite a serious condition and it's, it's, it's a really unhappy baby completely uncomfortable comfortable in between feet um, mm-hmm. and 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 um, yeah that, that is a serious condition that needs some help but it's, it's rather less often the case then the other thing of, that we can also point out is the fact of immaturity so obviously yes. with a baby that's pr- born prematurely a prem baby yes we're going to be even more careful by by um, these conditions absolutely and let's also talk about the reality of of uh, induction of labor before due date and also the elective cesarean sections then you also actually um, work towards a more immature baby so hence how important it is to, to let babies grow to their full maturity it's going to be easier afterwards um yeah right are you seeing that yeah. Yeah. You're seeing that a lot. This is very, very typical scenario. We see a lot of babies that are born before the time. I don't know why we don't just leave them alone to bake and come out nice and mature. And it is a common scenario. We are seeing a lot of induction of labor before the time, generally around Christmas time and when it's school holidays and people need to go and leave because they now need to manage their clients. So let us just induce the baby and take the baby out before the time. It is like interfering with that cocoon and the moth inside and digging it out before the time. It doesn't do well. So we need not to do this to our babies. We need to make sure they are mature when they come out. If you are at this stage pregnant and you need to question and you need to ask your caregiver to please make sure that the baby, if you're going for that cesarean, is closer to the due date, which is after 39 weeks of pregnancy, and um, make sure that you actually have planned this very well so that we have got uh, a baby with less gut issues. Um, As Margriet says, there's so many things one can do to, to help a crying baby here. And this is definitely um, to delay the onset of the Caesar or the induction of labor and to try and give birth as natural as possible without many drugs. The other thing is to, when that baby is crying at such a rate that you become frantic yourself, when you start becoming frantic is when the baby gets worse. So the thing is, mommies need to be calm, yeah. as calm as you can. And you can't actually hold that baby if you're feeling so intense. You need to give it over to somebody else and go and have a cup of tea and come back and then hold your baby again once you have calmed down. Mm. Um, Yes, it is a factor and keeping the baby upright and trying to basically keep the baby skin to skin is a huge help for the baby. And it doesn't matter, you're not going anywhere. You can spend time with that baby and keep it as close to you as you can. Mm. Um, There are various, many many other things that one can do, like prop the baby up for a reflux baby that's very unhappy at a 40 degree angle, either with a rolled up towel or a wedge one bars, but just be aware of your your safety recommendations as well. Also, when you're keeping a baby on your chest and you're sleeping, you need to be aware that the baby can fall off your chest. So be safe at all times. Mm -hmm. Check everything around you and try to get some rest. Try to get out. When you find your baby is extremely tetchy, go out for a walk. Take the baby for a walk. I do find that fast movement helps. If we put the baby into a nunupa, wrap the baby against our chests, and go outside and smell the fresh air, we all tend to calm down and baby calms down as well. Mm. Have you got anything to add to that, Margriet? 
So important what you're saying there, the aspect of the mom. I think oftentimes babies are stressed because mom is stressed. <laughs> so it's so yes. important that like we can't overemphasize that. Um, so mommies, please relax. Um, most of the time your babies are fine and it's just you that are overly worried, especially for our first time mommies. So um, yeah, it's very important that really you are still one unit. So the baby picks up on your tense tenseness and that can really mm, give definitely. them a tense stomach so it's super important mm. to realize that so if mommies are fine and relaxed most of the time babies are going to be fine and relaxed too so really remember that it's very important that you are doing well as a mother and then Marion I also um, uh, wanted to just let us emphasize and you did did talk about it but obviously um, the that mommy that was asking about the schedule feeding and so forth and the top up and so forth that that I think is one of the main reasons that our t babies are upset is that we want to put them in a yes. schedule whether it's breastfeeding or formula feeding but a schedule is, is often too rigid and um, we can overfeed our babies and we can we should just learn to trust that a baby is going to yes. give you the clues. So mommies need to learn to read their babies. That's another really big thing. And to get in tune with, with, with baby. And that takes some time and encouragement, but to learn to trust that baby will say when it's hungry and, and that you can demand feed. Um, I'm sure you, uh, you see that happen all the time. Yes. Marian. So I, I just think that demand feeding is the way to go. And mm -hmm. is intense in the beginning because now you have been through a hectic hospital stay and um, you're going home and you are walking into that front door of your home. You're feeling different and you're finding that you need to find your feet as a new mommy now. You have changed, you're now mommy and you are going to do the best you can, but you also put a lot of stress on yourself from these points of view because everything needs to be perfect. Newborns are not perfect. We are not perfect. You have to just go with the flow and allow what happens to happen. If you haven't brushed your teeth that morning, wait for the opportunity to brush your teeth, but make sure your baby is happy. It's not about us at this stage, it's about this newborn and life taking off now and demand feeding um, is intense in the beginning up until around six weeks and then generally we find that um, it starts settling down and mm -hmm. then at six weeks of course you have a massive growth spurt mm -hmm. which is when baby has milestones and development happening and this is where I find moms are keen to top up because they feel the baby's not getting enough not realizing that this little tot actually needs to be on the breast as often as you can to pull up that milk supply. Remember your body is magic. It can do so many things. And six weeks of being with that baby can cause you quite a lot of stress, life changing for you. But this is what you've planned. You've planned to have this baby. And if you look back, six weeks in one's life is actually not a long time to get through this period. Then of course, 10 weeks we start again. We have massive growth spurts every two weeks. <laughs> and then mommy says, I actually don't have enough milk. So because everybody is telling you, granny's telling you, auntie's telling you, top the baby up, top it up, it'll settle down. That's when the tummy issues start again. Constipation, um, formula that's not suited to the baby formula on the hold is not so easy to digest breast milk digests very easily and remember as we said that first bit of breast milk is only five mils it's your colostrum by the time that baby is 30 days old 28 weeks 28 days or so we're looking at the baby's tummy being the size of an egg um, then you see these mommies trying to feed 100 to 150 mils of formula and because they, they've heard that immune system is important, so we first latch the baby and then we top it up afterwards. So then we start with explosive stools and discomfort and little bloated bellies. So um, mm. ladies, wow. you need to take a look at that um, feeding issue. Humans are not meant to overeat in that fashion. And we also do set the body type up for life. You overfeed your baby now with substances that the baby finds hard to digest. 
by the time they're 40 years old, they will have metabolic disorders. So it's mm. all in the research. We look yeah. at uh, fat children, obese children, they just want to eat, eat, eat. Wow. Yeah. There's so much on all of this. Sure, Marian, it's such um, it's it's quite big this topic, hey. Um, so yeah, I, it's I, fast. <laughs> it's fast. I do um, hear your sense of warning, um, your urgency in what you're saying, and uh, we can't overemphasize it that we really should stick to the to nature and to how it's intended. As much as we are modern moms, so I'm sure you're dealing with that, especially up in Joburg area. This we, we are faced with a modern le- way of living. It's a reality and it's a pressure that mommies are experiencing. Um, but there is just no better way. You need to learn to become a bit more inefficient when you have a baby, mm. to get more into your intuitive space. You have to let go of your go, 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 Mrs. Um, have it all together. That is going to be the easiest way for you to handle um, handle the baby baby phase. So, and also, it's not going to be like that forever. It's as Sister Marion is saying, listen, what is this on a lifetime? So, and this is such important time for to, to for your child, for your baby, to set them up for life. So, give them that time. And also, I really want to emphasize how important it is that babies are close to you and skin to skin and with you. Yes. Um, so it's way more than feeding. They don't need so much milk but I need a closeness. So sometimes you might feel my baby's just wanting me all the time. It's not because baby's hungry. There's so much nurturing happening and I need that closeness. So most of the time you think they don't get enough milk, but it's not the case. They just need you. That's what I need. It's nurturing. It's closeness. They still feel they're one with you. So their baby's going to be on top of you most of the time and just get on with it and enjoy it. I mean, you've wanted this baby, right? Um, It's so, so important. It's going to help make your life much easier, yeah. less troubles. <laughs> yes. And then the mix feeding. Let's talk a bit about the mix feeding, Marion, on, on how that aggravates tummy troubles. Yeah. So luckily now you're talking about all you've just said now with mommies and keeping babies close. We've been so fortunate with lockdown and I think it's taken us a step backwards mm-hmm. where my mommies are actually enjoying being with the baby thoroughly and keeping them skin to skin. And also daddies are getting involved here as well. So with the mixed feeding, from an immune system point of view, it definitely is not as beneficial as just breastfeeding your baby. Mm-hmm. Doing the, And also the gut issues will flare up with the mixed feeding and colic will become more intense. We definitely need to just do you decide if you are, I've had a mommy now who her first lot of babies were twins three years ago. And um, amazingly enough in vitro, and now she's just had her second little pregnancy oh, with awesome. this baby. And mm-hmm. she said to me, because of all the allergies that her first two had and all the, the eczema, the runny noses, she was going to breastfeed this baby because she didn't want to go through the same thing and mm-hmm. um, give it two three days in the hospital this baby is on formula and <laughs> we've already started with allergies and baby's been admitted to hospital already with intense stomach pain so um, the formula they've put her on is a hydrolyzed formula now for that um, eczema and mommy is a very stressed out mommy so um, (laughs) the breastfeeding has fallen by the wayside I'm afraid and um, now she has to go through all of this again and what I'm trying to say here is if we can stick it out and we can try to just do the one and if we're desperate to express breast milk rather and top up with that uh, in the beginning, we rather prefer not to introduce teats and dummies so that the baby doesn't get any nipple confusion and gets used to the idea of the latch. And a lot of our babies that have come from cesarean section need to actually sometimes be worked on by a chiro or worked on by a physiotherapist to straighten the little muscles in the tummy out with all the nerve endings that are clamped down by tight back muscles and uh, digestion that is slowed down. So we work on the baby, we stretch the baby out a little bit and often we find that the gut becomes more functional 
And if we have these troubles in the beginning, we work on these things to get the baby latched well. So um, also the stools, you'll find sometimes with mixed feeding, you'll get um, either constipation. Usually if they're just breastfed, they're not constipated at all. They may have gas and a lot of you will say that the gas you're trying to eat properly you you've done exactly everything you think um you should be doing the other thing that's advised is probiotics for that little baby's gut as well mm -hmm. which um, can put the microbes back into that little baby's gut again to heal up the, the gut and then um, from a breastfeeding point of view usually they're getting all these microbes and they are building a stronger immune system and they are protecting themselves from allergies. Allergies are a huge thing right. and we're seeing a lot of allergic babies these days. So if you mixed feeding, the allergies will come out. Wow. Yes. Thank you for pointing that one out. Hey, it's, um, it's very important that we know that we're aware of those things. Um, now, Marion, uh, our time is just flying by and there's a few questions that we want to see answered. Um, but just before okay. we go into this, just a few practical natural remedies, because we know that there are real problems there and mommies are desperate and they want to give something to their babies, right? Um, what are your go-to natural remedies that, um, that you can so use? So I always say to my moms, Take away everything you're giving that child. And sometimes you've got a baby that's on a formula and it's got reflux, something like a, a Similac Total Comfort, and then we're giving Nexium, we're giving Vitamin D, we're giving Vidalin drops, we're giving a whole host of meds. And my advice to that mom is, you don't know what's actually helping that baby because you're giving so many fins. This gut doesn't like all these things, so stop everything. Try a natural remedy. If your baby cries a lot, something like a chamomile, chamomilla, chamomile tea for the mummy, which goes through the breast milk, and some chamomilla tablets, magfos for the baby, is an awesome treatment for that baby. Magnesium for mummy, and also, um, these days, I don't know if you've seen, there are magnesium salts that you can put into the baby's bath as well to calm it. We like to also use rescue remedy for babies and um, it's safe to use. The natural products are far more safe than any other product you'll find on the shelves. In fact, yesterday, one of my moms bought a bottle of medication she bought from me for the colic for her baby and which I presume to have been a very natural colic remedy and then she pointed out to me all the preservatives in there and right. um, the sugar exactly. <laughs> so <laughs> she gave it back to me and I said I'm terribly sorry I didn't realize that it actually had all these medications so um, we try to go completely 100% natural products and there is a vast range on Natura. Um, there are a couple of different companies and Natura is my go-to. And if you check mm. it out and you'll go onto the site, you will see what you can use for the constipation, what you can use for, for a calm, to calm the baby. Rooibos tea in itself as well, also is often a very good um, go-to. Uh, 25 mils in obviously a little bit of an older baby, not your neonate. We don't want anything but breast milk in those uh, first couple of weeks. And if we can avoid doing solids right up until between four and six months, and you'll also get a lot of different advice on that, because the one peed will say solids at four months, the other one will say six months. Breastfeeding Association says six months. So there's a lot of info out there. Mm -hmm. And for a new mommy, it's daunting, because who do you believe? what you actually find works and i would suggest to try and find a caregiver that will help you and will go with what you need and try mm. to put you on the right track and yeah. stick to one person yes yeah rather than googling everything oh marion i almost feel like i want to apologize for some of these mommies because they just don't know better mm. and 
as healthcare workers can just bring, bring such conflicting messages, right? Uh, my okay. goodness, but um, yeah, so we are feeling for our moms out there that have had a hard time and just want to cheer you on and um, we don't want to make you even more stressed out about this all and really learn to trust your your own mother instinct your intuition and learn to understand how your body works how how baby works and that is your best go-to manual right and um and and really don't feel you need to get all those medicine like you've got everything it takes uh, yeah. most of it you are the baby's best medicine so that's the bottom line so we, i think sometimes we're over complicated and we want to treat and intervene and oh my goodness yeah um you should just go a bit more back to basics again um so let's just go over to a few questions and you have tackled them already in our talk i've been listening with those questions in my mind there was one mom yes. a while ago and it's actually also a topic completely on its own she's asked how to cope with an emotional toddler um that's a big oh, one that's a difficult one how old is the toddler that is the first question right and what it, what does the the toddler have to deal with on a daily basis mm -hmm. and how is the toddler fed um, what is the diet like? What are the sleep uh, times like? Is the toddler getting enough sleep? Uh -huh. There are so many things that one can pinpoint here. And um, an emotional toddler is often a toddler that needs something. It needs love. It needs attention. We are emotional for a reason. What is happening in the background? Is mom an emotional person? Are we mm. actually just um, needy? Are we needy? Um, the child needs to be assessed and a history needs to be taken. So there's so many reasons why toddlers are emotional. I see it in my office every single day. <laughs> and then you look at the interaction with the mom and the mom's absolutely horrified at her toddler's behavior. Um, <laughs> We're also finding in lockdown now mm. we're having a lot of very stressed out toddlers. They're not exposed to people around them. They mm -hmm. come into an environment where there's strange people wearing masks and um, they don't want to be touched. They want to be loved and they want to be held by mommy only. It wow. is very, very hard for that mom. Mm -hmm. Very difficult. And on the other hand, we have to look at what um, is happening, happening around that baby, that toddler, so to say. Yeah. And uh, toddlers are generally a whole different minefield. <laughs> no, so that, they, that, question, that question needs some more differentiation, but I think you unpacked it very, very well. So that it's, a, it's, it's, a, it's a big topic. So, but the basics is that they just need, they've got emotional needs. So you need to find out what those are. Yeah. Um, so let's just go on to the next one. What is the best remedy for a baby of two months with reflux? She's on Isomil Similic Total Comfort Formula, on Telemann Drops, Nexium and Probiotics. Okay, now I think we did answer most of that earlier on. The yes, Nexium you can summarize. Is, the Nexium in, in itself can cause um, nausea. Remember, it is a drug used in adults. If that baby is on Nexium, it needs to be on Nexium for a really good reason. For instance, like projectile vomiting and a lot of crying and weight loss. A baby that is not healthy, it's a sickly baby. That is the baby that needs to be on those proton pump inhibitors. On the whole, we don't actually advise it at all. So that's the one thing I would try and eliminate unless it's absolutely necessary. Mm -hmm. Then the two different formulas can also cause a lot of um, irritation for that baby. In your question, you said this was a two month old baby. Right. And um, I would actually remove everything and start from scratch and use homeopathic remedies for this baby. Right. Use um, keeping the baby upright uh, for 30 minutes after its feed and winding for 10 minutes only, not much more. And also remember overstimulation of that baby because it's already an irritated baby. Mm. So this is the baby that needs to be with mommy, up on the chest, without people telling you on the sidelines, you're spoiling this child. Yeah. Okay. We're not spoiling this child. 
this is a high needs child that needs to be up close to mummy and smaller frequent meals are generally advised for reflux babies that's right so um yeah there's so many different ways of doing this yes it's very hard we like to medicate we always feel like a medication would work so much better but actually in actual fact you can get through this without any medication yeah. and put the baby on a formula that's easily digestible and there are so many on the market now and um, what is your take on telemann drops i think that is the thing that's very much used i see that on yeah. our side and i don't think telemann drops work all that well um I think it's more for us that we're giving the medication to feel that mm. we're giving something to the baby. Mm -hmm. I would rather give something like a magfos to the baby and a bit of chamomilla. So right. to emit the telemann drops. In fact, sometimes what happens, we overdose them with the telemann. They form this huge big bubble in their tummies and this bubble just bounces around inside. You can actually feel it. Shame. So <laughs> yeah, we don't mm. feel that it works all that well. Oh wow, Let, Macfos, that's a tissue salt, right? Just for yes, those that yes. doesn't know what Macfos is, it's a tissue salt. It's homeopathic as well, so that's a really, really a great remedy to have. Yeah. Um, okay, next question. Um, we haven't really touched on this tummy trouble, but it is also a tummy trouble, in fact. It's constipation. Um, my, oh. son <laughs> my son is six weeks and he keeps being constipated. I'm breastfeeding and bottle feed during the day. I would like to know what can I use to stop the constipation? Okay, so we don't really need to use anything. This baby is very young, so we don't advise using any medication at this age. What you've got to focus on is, is the baby getting the right amount of, of milk? And also when you're mixing the formula, to be careful with how you mix the formula. How hot is that water when you're putting the formula into it? And what kind of a formula are you using? We normally would go on to a anti-constipation formula for that baby. Generally, if they're breastfed um, most part of the time, they're, they don't get constipated. And some of my mommies um, mistake the pushing, which is what we all do when we sit on the toilet. We mm, we pull faces. That is not constipation. So it could be a little bit of gas that's there. Mm -hmm. What does the stool look like when it comes out? Is it soft? Draw Normally, if there's breast milk there, that stool comes out fairly soft anyway. And um, you might find that um, you're thinking it's constipation because the baby is pushing all the time. And that is a common thing that you will find in most of our babies they all use the pushing motion and generally we find that it isn't really a constipation as such unless the stools come out in hard little balls and cause the baby to cry um, mm. we would use also some chamomilla for this this also helps to loosen the stools a little bit and um, it can sometimes cause a little bit of too much looseness of stools but depending on the dose you are giving to the baby also once again the mag fast tissue salts also helps with this does that mm. answer your question i'm sure that is a very good answer to your question so again it's oftentimes uh, over diagnosed um and yeah just top up on the breastfeeding hey that's the best um yes. the best way um so yeah i thank you for that answer last question and um, does teething cause constipation um, it's often the other way around. We, we normally get looser stools, but it is not unheard of. Constipation can happen purely because that baby drools like mad. So they do lose fluids from the teething. And uh, generally the stools are looser, as I say, but we hardly ever see a constipated stool from a breastfed uh, baby or a teething baby. It depends on the formula as well and the mm -hmm. hydration status of that baby. Right, so you have to look at the whole picture, the full picture yes. in order to say that, yeah. 
Marion, uh, when our time has been flying, I think we can talk forever on these topics. And um, yes. but yeah, thank you so so much. This was really um, valuable and resourceful. Um, so thank you for sharing your pearls of wisdom and all your years of experience. And um, where can women find you if there are women that are um, wanting to make use of your So clinic? we're at the Clifford Medical Center and we're at the baby clinic and we're there every day, including Saturdays. Wow. And you'll find us online on www.krmc.co.za or you'll find me online at www.marianwing.co.za Fantastic. We'll put all those um, details in the show notes as well as some of the remedies and the tips we've been talking about today. So um, that will be when we, for our podcast and YouTube, it will be in the show notes. (laughs) (laughs) Fantastic. It's been awesome. Thank you. Yeah, Marion, thank you. And all the best of what you do. It's such an important work you're doing. I thank you for what you're doing for all our mommies and our babies. Um, Keep it up. Um, thank you, Margriet, for all your yeah. encouragement. You're amazing. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> so we, that was us for today. I'm just going to do a last thank play you. of um, Natura. And um, we'll see you next, next time. Thank you. Bye. Introducing Natura's mom and baby homeopathic range for mums and dads wanting a more natural way of life. When it comes to tummy troubles, Natura offers five beautiful remedies for both mom and baby. And for tummy grumbling, marg and melts are your natural answer for indigestion, for heartburn, and for nausea. The Natura mom and baby range is made only with organic ingredients. It's in a quick melt format for easy administering to babies. Developed closely with professional homeopaths, the range of 13 remedies is designed to deal with the most common mom and baby niggles. Natura for a more natural way of life. Available at Diskim and other leading pharmacies.